Welcome to Crappie Magnet Secrets Revealed, the video to show the equipment and the techniques that we use to fish the crappie magnet. Sort of them all. You may ask yourself, what's different about the crappie magnet? Well, as you can see, uh, many of our products have been listed by a lot of the major publications as some of the best jigs in the world. In fact, one was listed as one of the top 30 lures of all time. What we've proved in a vertical situation, whether you're fishing directly below the boat with a float or spider rigging, this is preferred by crappie. In particular, if you spider rig with 16 poles, we can put jigs on all of them and you'll find out what crappie like. We have proven over and over again that this look, this horizontal look, makes a difference. The double cross head, truly a difference maker. It's a different type of jig. Everyone else's barbs that hold jigs on are up and down. Ours are on the side. Very difficult to pour, but it's unique in the fact that it holds the body on. I will catch several crappie and it won't even pull my body down. Because of the other barbs that are on jigs, it rips it and you gotta throw that body away. This one holds it on better. It's just a better product. It's a better wheel. The crappie magnet has proven itself over and over again. Just a couple weeks ago in Tennessee, our crappie magnet team used our products to not only beat the amateurs, but the pros in fishing with our products. They caught 24 pounds in two days, seven fish each day. That's 1.7 pounds an average for the crappie. They have proven time and time again as they fish these tournaments that our products are not only different, but in vertically fishing, they're better. There's only a few things you need to get started using the crappie magnet. The first thing is a line that you can see. Crappie SOS is blue. It's blue, so it has a tint of, uh, of, of color, so you can see the line. It doesn't seem to affect the crappie. Other species are spooked by line, crappie or not. This is a great line, it's super strong. Uh, it, it'll amaze you how strong this line is. I like our six, sometimes I like the four if I'm fishing deep and I wanna feel it, but I like our six pound crappie SOS the best. Then you need the crappie magnet in different colors of bodies. There's so many different colors we have, and there's a reason. Crappie change the, what they see throughout the day. And so you get a crappie magnet in several different colors. Then the double cross comes in three different sizes. You have an eighth, a sixteenth, and all the way down to a thirty-second. Now those are the three sizes that we fish throughout the year at different times. I commonly use the eighth. It allows me to fish deeper. I can also fish under a float, and that leads us to the last thing you'll need, the easy crappie float. I prefer to use the 2.0 of our series. We have a 1.5, 2.0, and a 2.5. The 1.5 can be used on the smaller jigs, but it gets pulled under by the 1 8 ounce jig. So what I do is I use a 2.0 float. It allows me to fish all three sizes of my jig heads, and it does not pull any of them under. So I prefer, if you're gonna get one, get the 2.0 inch floats with bodies, hooks, the right line, and you can smoke them. One of the most common ways to use a crappie magnet or a jig for a crappie is with a float. What we like to do is this. We use a 10 foot pole. I don't like a 12 foot pole a lot of times when I'm using a float or jigging it on its own and not spider rigging, but I like a 10 foot pole. A 10 foot pole allows me to have the control that I need, but still allows me to reach over and fish around structure, you know, away from the boat. But basically what we do is we tie our crappie magnet directly to the line. We're using six pound line here, and then we'll take our easy crappie float. The, the neat thing about the easy crappie float is it's got a slot in it. That slot allows you to put the line through even when the jig is already on. So now all I do is I take the stoppers and I pinch the line at the depth I want. Most of the time when we're fishing like this, it's during the spawn or a time when they're up shallow, and we'll go 12, 14, 16 inches deep, and we'll alter that based on what we need. Crappie feet up, so shallow sometimes is better and I'll change that depth as I'm fishing to see where they are. But basically, then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna pitch that in right along structure, as close as I can to it, and with my 10-foot pole, I can move around sometimes without even casting. Basically, I'll open my spool, and I will just take it, and I'll put it right where I need it. Right in your camera. Here's how I do it, watch my hands right here. When I go to cast, I just grab my line and pull it up, so I pull up all my slack. So now I can just swing my jig wherever I want to. I swing it, and then I let my hand go, so I can put it right over in where I want it to be. This little top right here has got a bunch of fish on it. All we're gonna do is pitch up to it. If they don't hit it, 
I pop it real quick. And a lot of times that pop will make that jig come up and it goes back down, they'll smoke it. Pop, get him. Just like that. That's a nice crappie. It's before I get to water, it hits the water. <laughs> before it hits the water, that's impressive. Yeah. But a lot of times they'll be in that top. There's one right there in the middle of the top. But the key is, the key is getting close to it without getting hung up in it with these floats. And your depth is gonna be determined by how clear the water is. Right there, like about 12 inches. That's typically where I'll start. And then basically I'll just change my depth based on the clarity. If it's not very clear, I'm gonna have to get closer to them wherever the depth is. This water is only three or four feet deep. So crappie feet up, I'm gonna fish shallow and then I'll change it as we go. I'll just pop it. Yeah. One of the big questions we have is what knot do we tie? We tie what's called a pitson knot. Um, I call it the magnet knot because we tie it completely differently than the pitson knot is tied. The pitson knot was tied by fly fishermen. They didn't have the weight of the lure to be able to swing around like I just did. Basically, uh, we take the lure, we spin it around the tag end. Check out this footage of how we tie what we call the magnet knot. Basically what I do is I take my line, I put it directly through the eye, and I let the, the lure hang down. If you notice in my right hand, I've made a gun where the line is coming through and going out. Over here is my tag end. The tag end is what I'm gonna actually spin the line across, but I gotta take this, my gun right here, and reach over and grab the line. Now you can see the line comes here, goes out, and goes right through here. Now I'm going to spin the line over this tag end. I take it, spin it around five or six times, and I stop it. Now in my right hand where the gun is, I've created a loop. See my loop right there? I take the tag, put it through that loop. Now I'm going to grab the, the, the tag end just for a second until the knot tightens up, then I let go of the tag and just pull it down to its tight. It is a very strong knot and it is very quick to tie. Now I trim my tag end off and I'm ready to go. Many times during the summer when things are slow, adding bait can help with the crappie magnet. What we'll do is we'll take these little pieces of bait and we'll take them and push them right up around the split of the, 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 the round part of the hook into the split of the tail. And I'll push it up in there so it opens that tail up just a little bit like that. And sometimes that can be a bad, deadly way to use the crappie magnet. One of the trickiest ways to use a crappie magnet is vertically fishing it without a float. Whether you're using a 10 or 12 foot pole in timber like this, or maybe a six foot six pole fishing directly below the boat, maybe 30, 40, even 50 feet deep. It can be very tricky. Uh, one of the ways we like to do it is we like to dead stick it. Check out this footage of Gerald and I on Greer's Ferry Lake fishing directly beneath the boat, dead sticking a crappie magnet without a float. There we go. Blue and white on a crappie magnet. Holding it dead still, Gerald? Dead still. He just come up there and sucked it in, just, you know, easing it down. Good deal. One of the techniques that we use a lot of times in crappie fishing with a crappie magnet is vertically fishing like we're doing right here. You can see we have a marker out. We're in 15, 20 foot of water. And what we're doing is we're finding our structure directly below us. And, and the key to this whole thing, uh, one of the most effective ways to fish a crappie magnet, whether it's shallow or deep, is vertically fishing it dead still. So what we're doing is we know our fish are right in here. And basically we're fishing 16 foot of water over structure and we're dropping this crappie magnet. So basically what you want to do is we're fishing blue line on a short rod since we're fishing right beside the boat. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop it straight down to the bottom. Basically going straight to the bottom to touch it so I know um, where I am when I stop. So I'm 16 foot of water. I'm all the way to the bottom. This wind doesn't get us here. Blow us over the fish. Once I'm at the bottom, I bring it up about a crank and then let it sit dead still. Now, if you watch that rod tip, that's the key to the whole thing. I'm, I'm letting, one, the boat's gonna move anyways, but the more still I hold it, it seems the more effective it is. Most of the time, a lot of crappie fishermen will wanna do this with it and they wanna move it around. It does two things. One, they don't hit it as often. Two, 
they don't uh, you, you can't feel the hit so watch watch how still our rod tips are they're very still I'm gonna make sure I get down there deep enough to be on the bottom the structure is right on the bottom and if I don't get a hit down there what I'll do is I will slowly let's go down one more time I go down to the bottom I watch this like that's why I like this blue line or a line you can see then I'll bring it up one crank and I'll stop Right there is where I want to be. If they don't hit it right off the bat, what I'll do is I will slowly start reeling it to the surface. Sometimes I'll find them up a crank or two or three. Once I find that distance they are, then I'll bring it up to that distance and I'll stop it right there. But you'll notice a lot of times that right there is the presentation you want. And you wouldn't think it. You'd think they'd want to chase it. You'd think they'd want to run after it. But a lot of times it's as simple as just sitting it right down there and holding it dead still. Just watch that rod tip. See how still I'm keeping it? There he is. And the whole key to the thing is just keeping it, keeping it still enough that one, they like it, and two, that you can feel the hit. Feel the hit. And a lot of times, it's the only way that they'll eat it. I him on a dude special. I'll catch your fish for you, Matt. <laughs> I hate that for him. He had his hands full with his other poles. Couldn't catch one. Uh, one of the, uh, the big helps in making the crappie magnet was uh, Harold Dude Maddox. They call him Dude, and he is actually a legend in Tennessee. And he is the reason the crappie magnet has... Uh, been designed the way that it is, especially the double cross head was really all his idea. Uh, he is a great crappie fisherman and one of his techniques is vertically fishing a crappie magnet. Check out this footage of him fishing on Percy Priest Lake in Nashville, Tennessee. We're up here, I won't hit that one stake bed. Now I've got a stake bed right on up a little farther I want to try. We'll give it a whack. It's a better one. A better crappie? Started out at the bottom, just reel it up a little bit, uh, just get it up it off up, the bottom. Crank it up slow, but I changed colors. Gotcha. I went to the chartreuse with the black specks. Gotcha, chartreuse with black plate. I believe that was though. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, that's color, it. So let's, yeah, a little different color it. water, different color mm -hmm. bait. Yeah. Delph is so. Color is everything. So we're about ten feet here. See on the graph the structure and a few fish it's showing down there. You start at the bottom and started coming up. Yeah. Back to back. Color, see what the difference in the color yep. is made. Wow, these fish in here, but they just don't seem to be real big ones. Uh oh. You got one wrapped up in it? Yeah, he got around a limb on me. Still on it though. See there? Yeah, see the rod bouncing a little bit. Yeah, he's still on there. Maybe he'll work himself loose. Come on. Felt like a good fish there, but the, all the big fish get hung up, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I'm going to put one of those knockers down there. I'll probably lose the knocker and all. Hand me one out of that tray. That's Two. the one. I thought that felt like a good crappie. <laughs> Had him all stuck up and got him loose. That's a good fish right there. Now tell me, these all these people that say color won't make a difference. <laughs> and look what's happened just since we changed color. They, they don't get out much. No, they don't do a lot of fishing evidently, but I'll guarantee you. People that don't believe color make a difference, if they'll come with me a five time or two, they'll see that color is everything in the world. When vertically fishing a crappie magnet with a long pole, like a 10-foot pole or longer, basically you're fishing directly below the rod tip. 
you'll drop the crappie magnet down to the proper depth in the spring shallow, but in this case we were eight to 10 feet deep. Then we'll pop it and we'll stop it. Stopping it will keep that horizontal look in the strike zone. We'll move it into the structure, keeping the jig directly below the pole. I like that bright line in this case, because you'll pop it and stop it. A lot of times right after you stop it, you'll see that right there. The crappie will hit it right when you stop it. Same method we use when we're fishing a float. We just stop it with the float and they usually will hit it right after it falls and stops real quickly. Bingo. We have two different jig heads that we use. We have the crappie magnet and the double cross head. The crappie magnet is uh, a jig that we only use in shallow water. We prefer this only in super shallow water and uh, it doesn't fall real fast. The jig head that we prefer and we fish the majority of the time is the double cross head with barbs on the sides. It holds the body together better, but it also opens your tails up a little bit. You take that jig and you put it right through the center of the body and right out the split of the tail. You can see the difference between the two. This is the one we use the most for crappie fishing. We'll use this one in super shallow waters in ponds, but this is the jig head that we, we use when we're crappie fishing. One of the most important things I can tell you is to keep the body straight. You can see the crappie magnet when it's put on the hook properly is completely horizontal. There's no sh turns in it, there's no bumps in it. This is what they prefer. The crappie look up and they see that little gap in the tail and that is bad deadly. But it's gotta look completely straight for them to like it. Good night on the fish right there. Jim Dandy. Crappie magnet spider rigging. It can be a deadly way to do it. Check out these techniques uh, back in our office as we show the different ways to tie on uh, when you're fishing a crappie magnet uh, spider rigging. You can do a single jig, you can do a double jig like Matt just caught that one on. But here's the techniques on how to, how to tie your rigs. There's several different ways to rig your jigs when you're spider rigging. One of the ways that we do it is um, we use a double rig. But I'm going to show you a couple other options. The first one is using a three-way swivel. A lot of people will call this a minnow rig because a lot of people use minnows on this type of rig. You have a, your, your six pound line coming down to a three-way swivel. Off of the one side of the three-way swivel, you'll see here, we have a crappie magnet tied with about a six or eight inch leader. Directly below it, we come down about two feet on a leader and we take a barrel weight and put our line through it three times. Come out the bottom side and we tie another crappie magnet below it. So we've got a crappie magnet up here and one below the weight about a foot and a half to two feet below our three-way swivel. That's one way. Sometimes uh, we'll just take a BB split shot, a pretty large BB split shot. We'll take a split shot and put it right here. The split shot will be put on but not tight. So that way you can push it down to push your jig off if you need to and tie your line directly to uh, the jig head when you're fishing this way. The preferred way that we like to fish um, spider rigging with a crappie magnet is we like to fish it in tandem one crappie magnet over the other. We tie the first crappie magnet directly to our line coming out of our rod. Then on the tag end that you normally would trim off, we leave it longer, about a foot, foot and a half, sometimes 18 inches to 24 inches, depending on how deep we are. And we'll tie the second crappie magnet below it. It gives us the weight we need, but it also gives us two jigs. That can become a problem if you're fishing very shallow water because this one will almost be out of the water. And that's why you'll want to vary that depth from time to time. But this right here is our preferred method because it gives us two jigs in the strike zone and gives us the weight that we need to get down to where the fish are. When we spider rig, we like a 12 foot pole. A 12 foot pole allows us to get a, far enough away from the boat that we can get to where the crappie are without spooking them by the boat. Some people like a little bit longer and that's okay, but a 12 foot pole, in our opinion, works great for using the crappie magnet when you're spider rigging. What I'm gonna do is just, I'm just gonna slowly troll. We're just gonna watch our, our rod tips change our depths a bunch and you can see these holders are perfect because all I gotta do is grab the rod as soon as I grab the rod just lift it and it comes right out of the holder these high-tech holders are perfect for for this type of fishing I've had several different other types they're hard to get the rods out of or just tricky this way I can change my uh, whole setup I can move all of them I can move one of them they're perfect now we just got to find the right depth I think we'll find them it's cool this morning 
it's June. And so this time of year, we're not going to find them up shallow too much. So they're going to be out suspended over something in this deeper water and in the bigger part of the lake. Get him, Pop. Get him. There's a little one. But Pop sets the hook like a girl. So you got to watch him. <laughs> Watching my graph, we're going 0.6 right now. And we're in about five and a half to six foot of water. My graph is not exactly right because my trolling is not set up. You can see a lot of structure here, but nothing in particular to hold them to this spot. It's just open water and this is perfect for this type of setup because we've got eight jigs out going at different depths, <clears throat> going at this speed. A lot of times we'll find out if this is the speed they want by when we turn the boat. If I turn the boat and the outside set of poles catches fish, then that means they want it faster. Uh, one time I was out here in this lake in particular, when I got to 1.1, they started hitting it a lot better, uh, which is really fast for trolling. Most of the time, 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. The fish will tell you what speed they want, but you want those lines where they're not laying back too far. They're straight down. So you, if you have to add weight to get down there and do it, do it. Or in our case, we'll add two jigs, two crappie magnets, and fish them about 12 inches apart. One of the tips that I'd give you when spider rigging is make sure you have enough weight with the crappie magnet or extra weight that your line stays straight down. Now watch as I turn here, watch the, uh, the lines start to lay sideways on my pole. That tells me I'm going too fast or don't have enough weight. This is why a lot of times we like that double jig system because two one eighth jigs will allow you to have enough weight to get it straight down. When that line lays back, one, it comes up and two, it, it, it's pulling it more. And with the crappie magnet in particular, it doesn't work as well when they're pulling it. They like that line straight down. So either add a split shot above it, loose so you can slide it down, or add a uh, barrel weight at the bottom with a double jig system so that way your lines are straight down when you're fishing just like that right there. It makes a huge difference when you're spider rigging. Colors make a difference. This is one of our new colors called the bison and what I'll do with I'm um, spider rigging is I will take and I will switch colors up different head colors different patterns and it'll make a huge difference. And then we'll start to notice, we were just talking about it, that pole right there is continually getting hits. Then we'll switch more of our jigs to that color. Spider rigging can be the best way to find out on a certain lake on a given day what color they want. If you want to go to a float after that, then I know what color they'll hit. Many will ask, why all the colors? It's significant to have many different colors when you're crappie fishing. What I always start out with is this. In clear water, I will use my glitter colors or more natural looking colors. Uh, it seems to work better, the fish can see a little bit better, it looks more natural. In the stained water, things that, uh, you know, that they can't see real well would be these colors. So then I go to my chartreuse ones, orange and chartreuse, black and chartreuse, anything with a lot of bright color I'll use in that, that situation. But here's what I find. I'll put the head and the body together and I can guarantee color makes a difference. When you're spidering with all the different poles, you can see you have one that will continually catch fish. I have seen it many times, in fact I've seen it with this color right here, that the head color will matter with that body. You can try white, you can try nickel, you can try black and you'll get to a color and with the head and the body combination they like it. It gives them three different colors. A lot of times I'll put a different color head on with the color body. So I'll put a pink head with a you know orange and chartreuse body. That gives me three colors. One of those colors the crop are going to like, but color makes a difference. These are only some of our colors, but get a good variety, some bright colors, some natural colors. Mix them up a little bit, mix the head and the bodies together to find out exactly what they want. Spidering can be really productive. It's a technique that can be uh, an easy way to find fish when you can't locate them. Check out this footage of Wild Man Wilson from here in Arkansas and I catching them uh, one after another while we were spider rigging one morning. A quick review of what you need to fish the crappie magnet. Number one, you need the right line. We like blue line, we can see it, but it's not so bright that it spooks fish sometimes. Crappie don't seem to be too line sensitive, so this blue line works very well. We fish the six pound most, but we like our four pound as well. 
First thing you need is a good line, something you can see. The second thing is choosing the right rod for what you're doing. When we spider rig, we want a 12 foot pole. It's long enough, it can get away from the, the boat and doesn't spook fish. In shallower conditions, or if I'm fishing a float, I like a 10 foot pole, something that's not as long, where I can swing the fish back up to me. I can also control the rod a little bit better with a 12 foot, a little bit harder to cast. 10 foot pole, and I even go down to a six foot six pole if I'm fishing directly below the boat, as you saw in this video. The next thing you need to do is choose the right head. First, the double cross head is the best jig head that's out there and the best one to fish the crappie magnet body. Choose the size you want for your conditions. If you're spider rigging or fishing very deep, the 1 8 is the best. Fishing with a float, 16 or a 32nd could be best. I prefer the 1 8 if you're going to choose one. You can fish in all those situations in most cases with this 8. Then you choose a, a, a variety of different colors of the crappie magnet. Something bright, something natural, so you can switch up different head colors and the body colors. Then the most important thing I could tell you about putting this thing on is make it look like that. If it does not look straight, it will perform like a lot of jigs on the market that got curls in them or tails or something that doesn't look exactly right. This is what separates the crappie magnet. When it looks straight like that, with that tail open just a little bit, it will smack them. Crappie are looking up on that thing just like that, but they also see the straightness of the body as it falls. This is what they like. Put that body on there straight, get it up tight against the jig head, and then fish it right in the structure. If you're going to use a float, the Easy Crappie Float in the 2.0, the 2 inch size, will fish all of our jig heads and make it easy. If you're going to add weight to it or fish minnows or something else, the 2.5 is good. And for the smaller jig heads, you can use the 1.5 Easy Crappie Float. The most important thing I can tell you about all of this is choose the right equipment and then get the crappie magnet right in the strike zone and let it sit dead still. They like the look of that thing sitting horizontal. With a float, let it sit there. If they don't eat it, move it to another spot. Vertically fishing, stop it down there. When I'm spider rigging, my poles are still, even though I'm moving, it's still a very um, vertical, uh, vertical fishing type of environment where the jigs are facing horizontal. But keep it still in the strike zone. Use the right equipment, and I can guarantee you will see a huge difference between this and other jigs that are on the market. As you can see, it's been a good day in the water. Live well's full, we've caught lots of fish. We've got a chance to show you how to spider rig with the crappie magnet. We've shown you footage of fishing underneath a float, vertically fishing with a long, put, a long pole or a short pole, like we did on Greer's Ferry Lake. There's many different ways to use the crappie magnet. In fact, there's more than what we showed in this video. I also know there's many ways to catch a crappie. There's minnows, jigs, cranks, but we've proven time and time again with winning tournaments, being mentioned in magazines, sold all over the country, that the crappie magnet fished the way we've showed today vertically is a very effective way to catch crappie. We hope this video has shown you ways that you can try the crappie magnet where you fish. Let us know how it works. Today we've seen color makes a difference. Today fishing on this lake, a red head with a midnight blue body and a bison head with a black body was the color that they wanted. Try these things on your water and see how you do with a crappie magnet. So lift them all. The panfish magnet is basically the trout magnet with a little bit different black head and colors that are dark that the uh, panfish, brim, bluegill uh, like. We basically fish it two ways. One is with a float. I'll always start with uh, about 12 inches or so and basically looking for the shallow areas where brim are. I've not cast over in here yet. The, the, the panfish magnet basically is, um, or the panfish easy float is basically a larger version of the easy trout float which helps you when you're fishing for brim. Brim don't seem to mind the uh, larger float. So basically I cast where they are and I pop it and I let it sit still. I'll let it sit still a little bit longer than I will um, a crappie when I'm crappie fishing. Brim don't mind it sitting there for a little bit before they eat it. The second way is basically casting the panfish magnet 
to the bank or if you're on the bank away from the bank and bringing it back very slowly. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pitch it. I'm going to keep my rod tip up so it doesn't sink real fast. And basically as I do that, I'm keeping it up off the bottom and, and making that thing just look like something coming along the bottom. Right there he is right there. And this is the deadliest way to catch bluegill panfish on the panfish magnet. Basically pitching it and reeling it as it comes back into me. They will swallow that thing up. And the good thing about it is they don't swallow it enough that they can't, you can't get it out. But basically, they hit it hard enough that you can feel it as you keep that rod tip up. The panfish magnet. Will it beat a cricket? Try it out and find out.